All right, guys, back with Mail Day. Got some pretty unique cards um, this time. A uh, little different. I do a lot of refractors typically, and this time I don't even know if I have a refractor, which is pretty uncommon for me. Um, but I do have some cool cards, and um, I've been kind of getting back into vintage uh, Hall of Famers um, in decent condition. You know, I'm looking between like eights and nines if I can on some um, not real vintage, like real old, but in the 70s, um, 60s, and 80s. So I got this Lou Brock. Um, most of these are going to be centered 60, 40, somewhere in that ballpark. So pretty good centering for the sets uh, and condition wise, um, pretty strong overall. So I'd imagine most of these are between seven and eight, somewhere in that ballpark in terms of grading. But I want to pick up the Lou Brock. I just don't have a lot of um, non-rookie year vintage cards of Hall of Famers. And so I'm really trying to add to that piece of my collection. Get another Lou Brock here. <clears throat> Picked up the Tom Seaver. And most of the, I, I use certain sellers on eBay that I typically look at. And um, typically they have like set breaks quite often. And I find that if you can find some that are in good shape, typically the rest of the set's in good shape. So I feel pretty confident buying cards from that seller, um, knowing that the set itself is typically gonna be from the same um, same consigner or whoever purchased, however it was done. And um, I know I'm getting fairly clean cards. Got the Robert Parrish. Um, I had bid on some other basketball that I didn't win. Um, some of the stuff actually, you know, because the basketball taking off right now is gone pretty high. This is one I got for TTM though. Um, I like that card. It's, I like that better than his rookie card. I just think it looks better. And then being a Buckeye fan, I had to pick up the Jerry Lucas. This one's actually centered pretty well in really good shape. It does have the rough cut at the edge, which is typical sometimes with the this year card. But um, anyway, that that card looks good. Dude's got like a hairy chest, kind of weird, but anyway, <clears throat> for a card anyway. Picked up this, this card in pretty good shape as well, just off-centered a little bit left to right, but Dave Bing, so as you guys know, part of my collecting is TTMs, and um, so that'll get sent off to get signed, and I think it's going to look fantastic when it does. Um, I think it's Rookie 69, so those are the tall cards. This is a little more difficult to display when they're slabs, so I typically like to get, I, I still like to get them signed, don't get me wrong. But I prefer the um, the standard size cards as well. Picked up this Barry Sanders. It looks super clean. Um, really excited. Sorry, my case is dirty. But anyway, there you go. Um, centered really well. I just it looked fantastic, and um, I was concerned because the package was bent up when it came in, and so looked over the card. Everything looked really good. Um, I think it's high grade, probably nine, maybe maybe a ten. I don't know. It depends. It could squeak through depending on the front aesthetic is really good. But I really, I bought this card for, um, get, get a sign at a private signing. Um, I love that card of Barry. I think it's iconic. Um, that and the 89 will look good in my collection eventually. Pretty underrated guy still in terms of um, pricing. So Tony Gonzalez, this is his rookie 97 Flare Showcase. This is the Row Zero. And um, so his stuff is still really cheap, man. Um, for being one of the best tight ends of all time and Arguably one of the guys who changed the position. I think um, his stuff is still super, super cheap. So picking up some of his stuff when I can. Uh, picked this up um, as a best offer on eBay. Obviously you guys know Shaq Gold, Tops Gold. It's a seven. Um, just has a little tiny little mark right here. And I don't think it's a cut. It's more like a little print thing, which is fine with me. I bought this card specifically to get signed. Um, at a private signing. And the cost structure, the way these are right now, it doesn't make sense to buy like a PSA 9 or um, even an SGC 9. The prices on those are just so high um, for what I'm doing with it, there'll be no ROI. So not that I will sell it when I get it signed, but you know, you still wanna make sure that you're not losing money while you're doing these gigs, right? So for me, it was an opportunity to buy um, the card I wanted at a really, really good price and um, get it signed, get it slabbed and kind of move forward with it but super stoked to add these um hope you guys enjoyed it i know it's a little bit long-winded but hey guys I, I enjoy what i do with this stuff and it's it's a fun hobby and right now it's a crazy hobby and i hope you guys are enjoying it as well and um again collect what you like and do what you want with your cards man have fun with it love watching your videos so keep it up